Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you some useful cloth simulation techniques inside of Blender 2.8. We'll be approaching this with a focus on hard surface design. I'll be showing you how to do things like low gravity distortions and surface detailing. Usually when it comes to cloth simulation, I like using Marvelous Designer because it's very specialized software with a really powerful set of tools, but sometimes it's inconvenient to keep switching between different software, especially when you might just be looking for some simple detailing that won't require an extensive simulation toolset to create. Blender provides a fairly powerful set of tools for physics-based simulations. Something very useful that Blender provides us with is the capability to create different types of forces and have them influence physics objects in the scene. For cloth, this is very useful as it means we can get all kinds of effects over the surface. What you can see here is that I've created a few demonstrations to show off some techniques making use of Blender 2.8. You can get yourself a copy of the resources used in this video from the links in the description. There are two packages available, one you can download for free, whereas the other is paid. The free package contains basic blend files demonstrating all of the techniques shown in this video, whereas the paid package contains all of the example artworks for you to dissect and play around with. So let's begin. We're going to focus on creating soft body elements for low gravity environments. What I've done here is pull up some references to explain what I'm referring to. We have a mix of fictional and real life imagery here. In regards to real life, we have pictures of the Canada arm, which was used in conjunction with the space shuttle. Notice how the outer surface is largely comprised of soft materials. If we take a look at Paul Pepera's work, we can see how this style is well applied to various surfaces. Paul made use of Marvelous Designer for these works because it's very good at letting you achieve this, but today we're going to be trying to recreate these surface effects in Blender 2.8. To start with, let's try and take a look at creating these elements of padding. They're very pillow-like in style with heavy creases coming from the sides. Getting this kind of creasing on a pillow-like object in Blender is quite simple, but preserving the structure on the side of the object can require some manual changes. To achieve something like this, we can create a cube and subdivide it with an appropriate number of edge loops. Then, once that's done, we can go into the Physics tab and enable Cloth. Then we can create a separate force object and place it inside the cube, and increase the strength value to get it to expand the cube when we press play on the timeline. Under the field weight settings, we should also make sure the gravity has been turned down to zero so the object doesn't immediately fall when we start the simulation. This will give us some nice creasing, but by doing it this way, we lose out on some structural integrity around the sides of the object because we have not pinned them down. We can pin vertices in place by selecting them, creating a vertex group and then assigning the selected vertices to this new group. Then, with the cube selected, go into the Physics tab and then under Shape, choose the newly created vertex group. The thing about this is that while we've gained structural integrity around the sides, when simulating we will lose the nice creasing effect around the edges. Allowing the cloth to stretch more by lowering the tension and shearing properties doesn't necessarily make this better. The problem is that we don't have a way to simulate an excess of cloth material. In Marvelous Designer, this can quite easily be done by simply changing a couple of parameters, which will then try to squeeze more material into the same space. But in Blender, we can't do this and need to get creative. One thing that Blender does have over Marvelous Designer, however, is a powerful set of tools to let us create different types of physical forces. One solution I came up with for getting surface creasing while preserving the outer shape of the object was to make creative use of the vortex force type. If we keep the original force in the center of the cube to help it expand, but on top of this add two vortex forces inside the cube, one of which will be pointing up with a high strength value, whereas the other will be pointing down with a lower strength value, then we can get some interesting results. We end up with this dilation in the center and some folding at the corners. Adding a subdivision surface modifier gives us this smooth result that's quite satisfying to watch. Now these are both viable methods for getting some interesting creasing along the surface. The first example arguably looks more interesting, but structure is consequently lost from the original shape, whereas the second one maintains more structure at the sacrifice of creasing detail. But we may come for this by manipulating the surface in other directions with the help of vortex force objects. If I have a variation that I like, I can always make manual edits through the use of proportional editing or sculpting. For example, I could use sculpting to remove these harsh corners on the first object. Making use of these methods, we can combine different variations and create something like this. I encourage you to play around with the different force types to see what kind of effects you can get. 
Moving on, we're going to take a look at achieving surface distortions on a restricted plane where all of the sides have been pinned down. Again, if we use the context of a low gravity environment, we want some turbulent ripple or wave effects to move across the plane, while also having the center possibly extruding up or down. This can usually be quite tricky to do because it would require an intricate use of modulating forces, but I've managed to come up with a rig that makes use of the harmonic force type that can give us some interesting results. Remember, you can download all of these files from the link in the description so you don't have to build it all yourself. What I've done here is laid out a subdivided rectangular plane and surrounded it with four harmonic force objects. As well as this, there is an extra one above the plane. In terms of cloth properties, the mass is set to 1, and under stiffness, the tension value is 0.2 and the shear value is 0.1. Again, a pin group has been created to keep all of the outer edges in place. The strength values for the harmonic force objects are not identical. As for the surrounding objects, the strength value will alternate between 450 and 550, so opposing force objects share the same value. The object above has a much higher strength value at 1000. Now let's take a look at how this works. When I play the simulation, you can see that we get this wavy ripple effect that moves in from the edges towards the center of the plane. The harmonics objects around the plane are providing this wavy motion, whereas the object above the plane controls how far the center of the plane will extrude above or below the horizon. Just to demonstrate, I can move the force object up and down to show you how this works. Likewise, if I move all of the four surrounding objects around, you can see how the wave motion tries to follow in their direction. Speaking of planes, I've also included a blend file in the resources demonstrating flag simulation. This involves using a wind object to provide the major airflow and a harmonic object to preserve the structure. Also keep in mind that if you are moving simulation objects around and changing properties in real time, then the plane might bug out and disappear, so be careful when making significant changes. If it does this, just reset the timeline or reload the blend file. Now we're going to move on to something a bit more practical, which is creating cloth elements around another object and how we might create something interesting from that. What I've done here is take a simple rectangle plane, just like we've been using in the last few examples, and curved it to fit around the side of a cylindrical object by using a shrink wrap modifier. The cylinder object has been given a collider in the physics tab so that the cloth can interact with it. By using harmonics, we can get the familiar rippling effect on this. Now, ideally, if I wanted to wrap cloth all the way around the cylinder and scrunch it up like in Paul's artwork, then I would use a cloth cylinder, pin the edges to the appropriate ends of the original object, and then scrunch the material up along the way. This is quite simple to do in Marvelous Designer, especially since you can manually grab the cloth and drag it around, but Blender Simulation isn't quite there yet, and trying to stretch material around a cylinder can give some strange results, and doing a long, detailed piece of cloth is quite intensive on the software. Of course, another method you could do to try and fake this effect is to use a procedural cloud texture to displace the surface. We could do that by using a displace modifier on the object and plugging in a cloud texture. Procedural cloud textures are useful in Blender because it lets us control the scaling of the cloud details which will then be used to displace the location of vertices. In the modifier settings, we can lessen the influence of the displacement effect with the strength parameter. If we want to stick with the cloth simulation, there's one little trick we can do for detailing the whole cylinder, and that's to use radial symmetry with the array modifier. What it will do is copy the simulation result of the original object and duplicate it around the mesh. The array modifier uses an object reference to control the rotation of each new object. In this case, I have created a new empty object called cylinder center and rotated it 90 degrees on the X axis. Obviously, there will be seams at the edges where the vertices are pinned down, but I still think that looks quite cool, especially when combined with other decorative elements. So applying what we've talked about so far, I've gone ahead and put this composition together using only Blender 2.8. All of the soft body elements have been made using the demonstrations in this video. Remember, if you want to play around with it yourself, feel free to download the resources in the description. The free package will give you the basic blend files, whereas the paid package will give you this demonstration artwork. So that will wrap it up for this video. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring that bell. If you're not doing so already, you can follow me on my social media accounts to stay up to date. We also have a Discord community if you want to tag along. You can join through the link in the description. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.